Hey everyone, today I'm going to go through how I achieve certain lighting and post-processing effects inside of Unreal Engine 4. I've been asked this question so many times, so I thought I would address it in a video. We're going to go through how I created the environment in the background and achieve the lighting and post-processing effects. If you're wondering where the environment came from, I got it from this Red Forest, Red Wood Forest pack. It was on sale at the time. It's a pretty good pack. It comes with a lot of foliage. And that's the environment pack that I'm using for this. I took one of the demo scenes and I put a bunch of lighting and post-processing in. I'm going to break down everything now for you and go over the really core things that I believe are, that are important to this environment. First of all, you'll notice that there are these components over here. These are some of the most important ones, in my opinion, for lighting. Of course, it can change depending on the environment. For example, there's atmospheric fog, as well as exponential height fog. And there's reflection probes and all other types of things. But for an environment like this, I really like these. And overall, I pretty much always use these combined. And some scenes I might have reflection probes and other things happening, but overall these are five fundamental things that we're going to go through. The first thing I'm going to do is actually disable these effects and show you what the scene looks like without them. So let's turn off the skylight. The sky sphere, I'm going to reset it back to what it was originally. The post processing, I'm going to disable this. The light source, I'm going to get rid of the uh, occlusion and the exponential height fog. I'm just going to hide this for now. So pretty much this is what the scene originally looked like. Quite dark. It's hard to see things. It looks very red. The shadows are very harsh. You can't see the details in here. There's no real ambient light. It's okay, but it doesn't look great. There's a lot we can do here and one of the first things we're going to cover is the light source itself. So the light source is really important. There are a lot of things you can do with it. One of the main things you want to focus on initially, apart from how intense you want the light to be and affect your scene, which is usually something I come back to, you want to focus on the actual rotation of it itself and where, where are the shadows coming from? I already planned a good direction for the shadows based off the types of camera angles I'm going to use. But in a game in general, you are really focusing on can the player clearly see everything that you want them to see? And are you, f are you covering up any focal points? So first of all, I like to mess around with the shadows. After that, uh, the light color can be very important. I have mine slightly in the yellow. I'll take it back to white, put it back on the yellow. It affects the world and it gives it a bit of a different color. And you'll see this a lot more once we get the skylight back in. So let's go back to the skylight over here. This is a really amazing component. And if you have a look in these very dark areas, I'm going to enable the skylight. And it's allowing us to see in these areas here. It's no longer completely dark. It lights up the world a little bit. And this usually is the thing that makes a dramatic difference in the scene in terms of visibility, being able to see things and the overall look and feel of the scene, as you can see here. So the skylight is a very important component. You can mess around with the intensity. I personally usually keep it around one and you can also change the color. I will show you in a little bit what the light color does itself. Generally, when I'm doing these environments, it's not just one effect that makes everything look great. It's a combination of doing everything in a very subtle way. Next up, we have the sky sphere. This component is going to really affect the sky box. If you want to consider this a sky box in the scene. So firstly, I like to get rid of this color determined by some position as it allows me to access the override settings. Let me show you what these do. I've already messed around with them quite a bit, but if we go to the overall color, I can change how the lighting will look overall and I can get some pretty dramatic effects and it can look really nice depending on what I am trying to achieve. But you can't have a, just a nice looking overall color without messing around with some of these other effects. I'm just gonna put that a bit over here. Without messing around with the horizon and zenith color. 
So let's have a look at this. The zenith is the color at the top. So obviously I can change that to quite a few different things. And the horizon color is this color over here that you'll see now. And how I like to work with this usually is, whoops, just going to disable that. How I like to work with this usually is kind of like a gradient effect. So this color will be darker, this color will be lighter, and then it'll keep on getting lighter to the overall color. The cloud color, as you can see here, there are clouds. White is usually a good default, but of course, if you're going for something a bit unique and you're doing something different, you can change that. But I personally don't mess around with that too much. Outside of that, you have the cloud opacity. I actually turn this up. Here's the original value. So if I just click here, you can't really see them. But in this scene, I thought it looked quite nice to have these clouds that added, in the background at least, it added a bit of detail that was lacking when it was on this value. The speed, I turned it up to make it a bit more visually interesting. They're moving quite quickly. And we have the sun brightness over here, which you can turn down and up depending on what you want. And th these are the main things that I mess around with. The override settings, I never really keep that as standard. I always override it and do my own look because I believe it looks so much better once you add, add those custom settings in the override to the sky sphere. I mean, personally, I believe this and this, it's a huge difference. I feel like this looks a lot nicer. Another thing I forgot to mention was the light shafts. This is something pretty important and it can make your scene look really nice. So if I turn on light shaft occlusion, you probably won't see them too much, but you see these light shafts here. And we need to change a few settings and add a few more things before this really comes through. And that's mostly through the exponential height fog. So at the moment, a lot of what you see here is a combination of the skylight the sky sphere and the light source itself. Let's see the major difference when we enable the exponential height fog. So the exponential height fog creates a very big difference in how the, the sun shafts look, the light shafts. It also creates a massive difference in the scene. There's this fog as the camera gets further away. I really love this effect, especially in a forest. It looks quite nice. So, a few of the main components that you're going to invest your time in is the fog density, the color of the fog itself. You want to get something that really suits your environment and complements it nicely. Your opacity, so that's just how much you can really see the fog. And the start distance is important. So this is the distance it will start rendering from the camera. So you can have it closer or further away, completely up to you. This setting over here is volumetric fog. And this is what allows this these sun shafts to shine through quite well. So if you see here, I can modify this and they can become stronger. And it allows it to shine from different angles. Now it depends on how powerful you want the light shafts to be. Some scenes you may want them to be very strong. Some scenes you may not want them to be that strong at all. So these, a lot of these settings are about how does the fog and the light shafts interact with one another. Uh, you have the albedo here, so you can change the color of it depending on what you're trying to achieve. And that can add a different look to your scene once again. And apart from that, volumetric fog and the high fog component are the two major things that I like to mess around with here. In terms of that really nice final look, the thing that really polishes it, that's where you're getting into your post-processing volume. So I'm going to just enable this and let's go over here and unbound this. So that allows it to affect the whole world. And you'll see a dramatic shift in the tone and the feel and the look of the level. This is where it starts to look really nice, in my opinion. And it gives it a bit of a unique atmosphere and feeling. 
I'm personally not into fully realistic environments. That's my style. I really love some of the Destiny 2 environments and the lighting and the, the fog effects that they're doing in that game. And when I see something super realistic, it, the colors are boring. You want you want something with a bit, bit of color grading. So I feel like this really enhances the scene and can give it a dramatically different look. Let's go through some of these settings. And just before that, with the, because the post-processing comes with Bloom, it's a bit overpowering now, this light. So I'm just going to turn it down a little bit in the Hightfog settings. So let's have a look through all these post-processing settings. Now, the, the real thing making the scene look completely different, it's all about the color grading for this. If I was to disable these two, it kind of goes back to how it was before. So I'm going to enable the contrast, the gamma. If I enable all of them, it's only when I've changed the sliders that they will enable. So the saturation, I haven't messed around with that too much for the scene as I've figured out that it didn't really suit that well. It didn't look very good. And you simply mess around with the sliders and you can achieve different looks. You can also just go in here and slide around. I personally didn't want any of this in my scene. So I just disabled this, reset it. Next up, the contrast made a huge difference. You'll see in the green over here, it made a massive difference into the scene. So that is why I, I personally really enjoyed messing around with the contrast here. Seeing the different effects, you can get something very different. And the contrast is really one of the main effects if you see here. I like the way it makes the trees look, if you look over here, this color. And I feel like it really enhances the fog, if you look over here. The gamma added a bit more of like a, a blue tint or an aqua tint to things. And that's just, if you see here, it's very subtle. I only moved it down by 0.5 and it can make a huge difference. And the gain obviously makes a massive difference in terms of the look. And all I did was increase this, increase this by 0.3. So it really depends on how how much you want to affect the scene. If If you do too much of any of these effects, it can turn out pretty bad. So be very subtle with all these effects. You can of course change the other color grading settings, but for this scene, I was quite happy just changing the global settings. We have our standard image effects over here, which I didn't really mess around with too much. Bloom was something that, that I did increase. So let's have a look. That's what it looks like with minimal bloom. That's what it looks like with 2.2. .2. I liked the effect of the bloom. Of course, in most games, this is a setting that you can turn down. Depth of field, I didn't add to this environment. I personally didn't find it looked great for this environment. If I had more things in the distance, maybe mountains, depth of field would probably look quite nice, but for this scene, it didn't suit. And I didn't really want lens flares for this scene either. Next up, we have ambient occlusion. Now, I did add a little bit of ambient occlusion. As you can see, it creates these shadows in areas where meshes intersect. And I personally like this effect and it, it depends heavily on the mesh that you're using because if you add too much, it just makes it darker and it's not really adding much to the scene. If, if there's none, it's a bit lighter here, but some of the objects, they don't stand out as much. So it's important to figure out a good balance. It's also important to figure out a good balance of the radius. Switch that back to 75. And that is it. Those are the, the main settings that I use to achieve this kind of look. And I'm quite happy with it. And overall, these are the main things that I always mess around with. So it's important to figure out 
what type of look like when I make this a bit more red it totally changes the the feeling of the scene how everything looks so I feel like the post-processing there's no just like there's no in terms of lighting and post-processing there's no this is the perfect solution all I can really give you are a few steps on how to get here and these settings that we have over here and these components, the skylight, sky sphere, post-processing volume, light source, and exponential height fog. These are the main ones that I use personally to achieve these effects and these drastically different types of lighting. So what I'm going to do now is do a little comparison of the before and after. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video useful and that you got some advice on how to light your scenes and how to set everything up. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for similar content. And if you want to support me, I have this coffee link so you can buy me a coffee if you like. You can check that out in the description. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.